Hello everyone. Welcome to the class on carbonyl chemistry. In this series, I am going to explain all the carbonyl compounds with fundamental concepts. And understanding these fundamental concepts is key to master organic chemistry. So please pay attention. Even if you know the concept, listen to the lecture. I will give a different perspective that will strengthen your core concept. Now, this is what is a carbonyl functional group in which a carbon is bonded with oxygen with a double bond. Now, when you see the structure of carbonyl group, it is sp2 hybridized and it is a trigonal planar molecule. Now, we'll see all these terms in detail. Let us start with planar. Now, what do you understand by this planar? Any, any molecule, if it is perfectly flat in a single plane, is called as a planar molecule. Look at this. This is a plane wherein you have carbonyl compound is there and it is perfectly lying on that plane. The same thing is depicted here. All the atoms will be lying on a single plane. Nothing comes out of that plane. Then it is called as a planar molecule. Like benzene, we have an example. Benzene is also a planar molecule. Now, next one, trigonal. Trigonal literally means triangular. When you look at the arrangement of these atoms, they appear in a kind of triangle form. Hence, they are known as trigonal planar. So, the molecule lies flat on a plane with the shape of a triangle. So, that is what you mean by trigonal planar. Now, coming to sp2 hybridized, we need to understand hybridization in detail. In order to know that, we will delve into basic concepts of carbon chemistry. Now, Getting into the basics, let us see about carbon. Carbon atomic number is 6. Atomic number indicates there are 6 protons in the nucleus. In a neutral molecule, protons are equal to electrons. So carbon has also got 6 electrons revolving around that protons. In the nucleus, you have these protons. And electrons will be revolving around the nucleus. This is what is diagram is. Now, these electrons are arranged as 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. Totally 6 electrons are there. Now this 1 indicates a shell. The 2 indicates second shell. This one is a first shell. This one is second shell. Shell is also known as shell is also called as orbit. Orbit is the path in which electrons revolve around a nucleus. So, these are also known as K, L, M and shells. The first shell is known as K, second one is L and so on. Now, coming to the next one, in every shell you have subshells are there. Subshells. The subshells are nothing but S, P, T, F. So, in carbon you have S and P subshells are there. After that you have orbitals. In every subshell, you have certain number of orbitals are there. In case of S, you have one orbital is there. In case of P, you have three orbitals. In case of D, you have five orbitals. In case of F, you have seven orbitals are there. In case of carbon, you have only two shells, one and two. Two subshells, S and P. Orbitals, S correspond to one orbital, P correspond to three orbitals. Now, the outermost shell, the second shell, is known as valency shell. The electrons which are present in this shell are known as valency electrons. These valency electrons play important role in chemical bonding because they are the electrons which participate in chemical bonding. So, you need to figure out these valency electrons in every atom or molecule. Now, coming back to the carbon, Carbon has got, look at here, in valency shell it has got 4 electrons are there. It means carbon can form 4 covalent bonds. Because of this nature, it is known as tetravalent. Tetra means 4. Valent means the number of valency electrons. That is the reason why it is called as tetravalent. Now, coming to the next one. Why chemical bonding occurs at all? Why atoms need to participate in chemical bonding? What is the requirement? What is the logic behind it? When you see it, it, everything boils down to a concept known as energy. There is a relationship between energy and stability. Whenever a molecule has got high energy, it is 
highly reactive because it has got lot of energy it will be ready to react to in that case the molecule will be less stable so the relationship is inversely proportional so energy is inversely proportional to stability if energy is high stability will be low if energy is low stability will be high now the nature favors highly stable form always nature favors highly stable form so all the molecules tend to be in their stable form that means they need to have low amount of energy now when atoms combine to form molecules they lose energy they they lose certain amount of energy and that is what gives them stability this is the reason why atom participate in chemical bonding now how this stability is is indicated to understand this you need to know the concept called as octet rule now according to octet rule the atoms which has got eight electrons in their valency shell they are stable eight means octa that is the reason why it is called as octet rule some exceptions are there like for hydrogen and helium they have only one s subshell so they can accommodate only two electrons so for them it is two electron is will confer stability now so according to octet rule all the atoms try to get eight electrons at their valency shell that is the reason why they participate in bonding what happens when they participate in bonding they try to acquire eight electrons and satisfy this octet rule and become stable so chemical bonding is based on stability as well as this octet rule let us see a simple example the simple example is methane ch4 now see carbon forms four bonds because it is tetravalent right so every bond is made up of two electrons two two electrons so totally how many electrons are there surrounding carbon there are eight electrons are there because eight electrons are there it satisfies octet rule and it is stable similarly hydrogen the bond is made up of two electrons hydrogen surrounding this hydrogen you have two electrons are there so hydrogen when it has got two electrons it will become stable one so methane is a stable molecule because it satisfy octet rule the valency shell electrons are fulfilled and it has got low energy now next let us see about hybridization now when you look at this carbon the electrons are distributed as 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 right in s subshell you have two electrons here two electrons whereas in p p subshell you have three orbitals are there so these two electrons will be like this this one is in ground state when the atom is excited the valency electron moves to this p orbital and it turns out that every orbital contains a single electron so totally four electrons are there that is why it is known as tetravalent this is what we have seen tetravalent now in ch4 i told you carbon is surrounded with eight electrons and each and every this covalent bond is is formed because of sharing of electrons what happens is carbon will be providing these four electrons see this for this bond these four electrons are provided by this carbon the, these four electrons are nothing but these one now hydrogen comes with four more electron every hydrogen comes with one one electron four hydrogens four electron that means these hydrogen electrons will be paired like this so totally how many electrons there are eight electrons so this is what confers stability to carbon now in this process what happens is when you look at the orbital diagram the shape of s orbital is this one whereas p sorry whereas p you have three different type orbitals are there px py and pz now all the three has got different shapes and different amounts of energy now what happens is in the process called hybridization all these orbitals will combine together and form sp3 hybrid orbitals this is called sp3 hybrid orbitals what happens with hybridization is hybridization lowers energy that means this hybrid orbitals has lower energy than this atomic orbital the moment you lower energy what happens stability increases when stability increases that is what is favored by nature now the other thing all the atoms has got different levels of energy but in hybridized atoms all of them will have equal energy so the advantages with hybridization first one is it lowers energy which is most favored one second one energy will become 
all orbitals will have equal amount of energy now this is what happens in sp3 hybridization 1s and 3p orbitals combine together to form sp3 hybrid orbitals to this hydrogen comes and forms a covalent bond by sharing electrons so this is what is the orbital shape of methane molecule now the hybridization topic we are discussing to know details of carbonyl hybridization when you see carbonyl carbon this is made up of sp2 hybridization the carbon is also sp2 hybridized oxygen is also sp2 hybridized let us see the details now in in case of carbon we'll see only valency shell in valency shell we have 2s2 and 2p2 now in valency shell this electron because of the same subshell one electron transfers to this p subshell so this is how the four electrons are arranged now in this case this one s the px py only these three will combine to give sp2 hy hybrid orbitals the typical sp2 hybrid orbitals shape will be like this the shape will be like this now what happens to this unhybrid orbital the unhybrid orbital remains as such and it will be perpendicular to the plane so this is a typical sp2 hybridization pattern now what happens with oxygen let us see i told you oxygen also undergoes sp2 hybridization oxygen the atomic number is 8 when you see the electron arrangement 1s2 2s2 and 2p4 now we'll see the valency electrons in valency shell in s you have two electrons and then in p 1 2 3 and the fourth electron will be like this now look at this these are paired electrons bonding occurs with unpaired electrons the paired electrons cannot bond because every orbital can accommodate only two electrons now these paired electrons are always depicted on oxygen whenever you see oxygen on the oxygen there will be two two sets of dots represented these two indicates these two sets of paired electrons now in oxygen also sp2 hybridization occurs that means this s p and this one combines and forms sp2 hybrid orbitals the shape will be similar one of the orbital will be taken by this electrons pair and this electron pair and another one will be like this now what happens to this one similar to the carbon this one will be lying perpendicular to this plane so both of them whether you take carbon or in case of oxygen both of them undergo sp2 hybridization now look at this orbital picture this is s orbital this is px py and they combine to give this kind of orbital picture that is, this is what i have explained now getting into the details look at this this is a typical example for formaldehyde hybridization how the hybridization happens and how it looks like let us consider the carbon carbon has got this sp2 hybridized orbitals out of this sp2 hybridized orbitals two orbitals will be forming bonds with hydrogen the orbital overlap bonds results in sigma bonds so this one is sigma bonds now the same thing happens with oxygen oxygen also undergoes sp2 hybridization two of the orbitals contain two electron lone pairs and the other orbital overlaps with carbon sp2 hybrid orbital this results in a sigma bond between carbon and oxygen now in both the cases you have unhybridized p orbital is there in carbon as well as in oxygen these two orbitals will overlap sideways like this and they form a pi bond so one of the bond between carbon and oxygen is sigma the other one is pi bond now sigma bond is a stronger bond because come the overlap extension is more whereas in pi bond it is a weak bond the overlaps they just sideways overlap occurs because they are hence they are a kind of weak bonds so this is about hybridization in carbonyl compound in today's lecture i have explained sp2 hybrid trigonal planar structure what is a cell subshell and orbital and why chemical bonding occurs and sp3 hybridization and sp2 hybridization in carbonyl compounds in the next lecture i am going to explain about carbonyl group reactivity thank you for